Okay, let's do this. One more part to go. Hey again everyone, so you probably know by now, but this month marks 10 years since I started writing Kissing Booth and uploading it to Wattpad. So to celebrate, I've been doing a bunch of different things, like a short story from Noah's point of view on Wattpad, link in my description down below, so you can check that out. I'm doing a giveaway on Instagram, I'm going to do some lives and Q&As and things like that. And since you're here for part three, I'm assuming you might be in here for the first two parts, I'm doing a kind of like mini series where I read your favourite parts of the kissing booth, as you told me when I asked on Instagram, and I'm reacting to them and talking about like the writing process behind them and stuff like that. So in part one we looked at the party scene, Superman boxes, Ellie getting into a paint fight, and in part two we looked at Ellen Noah's first kiss at the kissing booth. And now we've got a couple of scenes to get through today. So first one up, actually I don't know what order they're in. Yes I do. First one up is Lee finding out about Ellen Noah. Then we'll do prom, Ellen Lee's birthday in the chocolate shop that she goes to with Noah because you guys really like that, surprisingly. And then like, I've, I've got to wrap it up with the, the end scene when Noah going off to Harvard, right? So, um, so yeah, I guess I better find the scene. <laughs> found the scene. Okay, so before I get into it, I just want to talk about this scene because I remember that there was a cliffhanger. So I don't know if I restructured this, but at the minute it ends with, and I wasn't sure he'd ever come back. I don't know if that's, <laughs> if that's talking about Noah or Lee, but um, I think I did change this up a little bit. But anyway, anyway, I remember when I was writing it on Wattpad, it ended, this scene, ended with a big cliffhanger and I posted in the evening on what I had and I would check my emails before I went to school the next morning, you know, check out comments and stuff. And I remember waking up to hundreds and people were really mad about the cliffhanger. And that was the moment where I thought, cause I couldn't just like read these emails in 10 minutes before I went to school. That was the moment where I thought, oh, like maybe people actually really like this. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm kind of good at writing. Maybe I am. <laughs> okay. I know this is gonna be emotional for the Alan Lee side of things. Okay. I kind of don't want to because I don't want to see Lee get mad and upset because Lee's so nice and he's just a little puppy. Okay, so Alan and Noah are having this romantic embrace. Um, I think they're at school. Hey, Al, Noah, are you? Lee's voice cut off. No, <laughs> oh no, Lee. I sprang away from Noah tripping over my own feet and staggering to regain my balance because she's a clumsy fool. Ooh. Okay, well this was a good line. I like this. I like this. The hustle and bustle of stragglers getting to their classes died down outside until the three of us were surrounded by silence. Oof, that was good. I like that. <laughs> Sometimes I like when I'm rereading my stuff and there'll be like one or two lines. I'm just like, Oh, oh Beth, you did good. And this was one of, um, I like this line. <laughs> Elle's panicking. Of course she is, because she's been lying to her best friend for weeks. Noah doesn't know how to fix it. And then Lee says to Elle, Noah, like, tell me this is not what it looks like. Oof, then he calls her Rochelle. Oh, I feel sick reading it, <laughs> but like in a good way. I'm obviously, I, like, I know I like writing the big emotional scenes, but I obviously went hard on this one because, again, there's another line that I quite like. He walked towards me, his footfall's heavy and slow, but stopped a few feet away like something was holding him back. I just, I like it. I don't know why. I just like that. I like the imagery. The next word to leave his mouth was a desperate plea, one that broke my heart. He, I haven't even heard it yet, and my heart's broken for him. Elle, you should never have snuck around behind his back. <laughs> please, you said please. Oh, Lee. Oh, oh this is gut-wrenching. And I don't know if it's just because I'm so attached to Lee or because like I actually kind of wrote it quite well, but... Okay, now Noah's butting in like, it wasn't all Elle's fault, calm down. And Lee loses his shit. Oh, this, so a lot of this is taken like, so a scene in the movie where this happens, a lot of the dialogue is taken like directly from the book. And watching it, like what, like reading this now, I'm like, no. <laughs> but watching the film, I just remember every time I see it, I know like if this was any other film, I would be upset because it's mine. 
I just watch it with this kind of manic glee, like some evil genius, like, yes, this is perfect. Because it is, it's exactly like the dynamic and the the emotion and stuff. It's just exactly how it, how I always pictured it. Oh, Lee just threw a punch at Noah. <laughs> Noah rubbed his jaw. Not a bad swing, actually. No, that was, it's not what you're supposed to say. <laughs> you're not helping. Again, I know I wrote it, so I shouldn't be surprised, but I really like that Elle runs after Lee in this moment. Like, she's picking her best friend. And this is the line that I see people quote a lot. Like, they always tag me on Instagram. The sentiment, I think, is very, like, I'm very proud of the sentiment behind it, if that makes sense. Some people say you'll fall in love and that's the person you'll spend forever with. The person who'll know your deepest and darkest secrets and still love you even then. The person who'll know exactly the right thing to say to make you laugh or smile or feel better. They'll be the person who, no matter what, you can't live without. I couldn't have cared less about whoever I fell in love with, to be honest. I just cared about losing Lee. And maybe you shouldn't have lied to him, Elle. Okay, I know I said a lot of the scene, I know I said in the other videos a lot of the scenes were shorter than I thought, but this scene is much longer than I remember and it is good. <sighs> you know what, Rochelle, save it for someone who gives a damn. Gets into his car and he goes and she's not sure if he's ever coming back. No, oh, I'm glad they make up in the end. Okay, well that was a big scene and now we're moving on to prom. <laughs> that was such a talk. Oh, he's such a dork and I love this about him and I've tried to like, like, I've always known that he's a dork, but sometimes I forget. They're on the doorstep talking and he says, I'm going to do this right. And he shuts the door and then rings the doorbell again so that he can ask her to prom properly with the corsage and everything. <laughs> See, this is what I like about Noah. He, he messes up, but he knows it. Okay, and Elle's lying to Lee again, obviously. Okay, I'm not like massively interested in reading the prom scene, no offense past me. I'm sure it's great, but I just kind of want to get to the Lee interaction. Okay, now she's going to talk to Lee. It only took like 10 pages. No, oh, no. <laughs> Elle's, doing, Elle's doing the serious conversation, telling Lee the truth, being a mature adult, trying to communicate. And then Noah just rocks up and it's like, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> I could have killed Noah at that point. Couldn't he have just let me tell Lee without interfering? Yeah, I know. Noah, you fool. Oof, why don't we see, Noah said, what Elle wants. And then she's like, Noah, off you, off you pop. Let me talk to my friend. And <laughs> Noah's just like lurking. <laughs> eavesdropping. She means we're dating, Noah said, and his voice carries so that we could hear him. <laughs> I don't know why I find that idea so funny, just Noah like, you know, slumped against a wall somewhere and he's like, we're dating. <laughs> oh, and Lee's like, see, and I, I like that I did this as well. Lee's not totally on board, but he's like, I can't stop you. I will try to be happy for you. Oh. I don't agree with this, Shelley. He hurt you really badly and I don't think this is going to end well. It's just not the right thing for you. What do you know, Lee? What do you know? But if it's what you really want, I'll be there to pick up the pieces after, okay? At yeah, actually, okay, they did sort of break up in the second one. So maybe you do know something, Lee, but... Um, spoilers. He's only been out for like a year. Where, where have you been? Oh, the way the chapter ends. Yeah, I said with a smile, everything's great. And in that moment, it really truly was. <laughs> it really was. Okay, so I had a surprising amount of messages asking me to do the chocolate shop scene, which I hadn't forgotten about, but I was just kind of like, meh. I, like, I probably would have cut it out of the book if I was editing it now. It just feels a bit extra. But a lot of you like it. So next up is the chocolate shop scene where it's Elle and Lee's birthday and Noah has a special surprise for Elle. He decides to take her out of town to a chocolate shop where he used to go when he was a kid. And there's this cute old lady there who gives them some free chocolates or something, I think. I've, I've gone talking. I, uh, I've, I've spent like two pages describing the chocolate shop. <laughs> I genuinely spend a long time describing this chocolate shop. I would like to go to this chocolate shop. Oh, this is cute. I forgot this. So Noah 
no one's mum took him to the chocolate shop because when he was a little kid he really loved um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Elle needed the book for a school project but he wouldn't let her borrow it because he liked it too much <laughs> see this is what I mean Noah Flynn is such a dog and I love it for him <laughs> Uh, they have this interaction, you got me a birthday present, of course I did, you're my girlfriend. Uh, did you think I just forgot when we did presents earlier? She's like, well, just didn't think about it. Shelly, I have always got you a birthday present. You got me a whoopee cushion one year. <laughs> you, can, you can see how the Flynn brothers are related. Oh, this is cute. I can see why you guys like this scene. <laughs> I can see why I wanted to write this scene. Thank you for making me read that. Thank you, I enjoyed it a lot. Where do I find a man who will take me to fancy chocolate shops and buy me chocolates? Because, um, yes please. <laughs> Final chapter. There's only a little one. I'm going to read the whole chapter, but we're only really going to talk about um, Noah flying off to Harvard. Look, I stand by how I end this book. Okay, and I know there's a sequel now, so you all know how what happens next. I always knew, like, the arc of their relationship and where it was going to go and stuff like that but I didn't want to tie it up with a happy ever after. I didn't plan on making it a five book series I will say that but I didn't I didn't want to wrap it all up because that just didn't feel right for their story. So summer's going by they're hanging out in the pool they're going shopping Noah's trying to make Elle ride the bike and she hates it and then we were at the airport, the tannoy overhead and excellent. The 8.05 to Boston was now boarding at gate five. If all passengers could please make their way, dot, dot, dot. Mm. I feel really sad. <laughs> I'm very proud of Elle. She's handling this very well. I knew there was a chance it might not work out between us, but I was okay with that. Good for you, Elle. Mm. I'm saying goodbye, I don't like it. We bought cotton candy at the airport for old times sake. It's too cute, I can't cope. <laughs> what seemed like decades later, they broke apart. His forehead resting against his. I love the forehead touch, apparently. <laughs> um, yes, Al, it does indeed seem like decades since this. <laughs> oh. oh, and then she just cuddles Lee and waits for the plane to go. See? The way I've ended this book, it works really well on its own. But I'm also really glad I wrote more. Because, like, shit, if I don't want to know what happens next. <laughs> okay, so there's two lines that I really like about this ending, but I can't decide which one I want to end on the video. So we're going to do both. The first one is, but whatever happened, I knew that there was part of me that was always going to belong to Noah Flynn. Yeah, like... My heart's always going to belong to these three too. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how I'm going to cope when like the third one is out and it's done because like when I finished editing it, I was like grieving. I had to like mourn the characters because they've been part of my life for a very long time. And then that was it. It was, there was no more to do. But then I got asked to write the Kissing Booth road trip for World Book Day and I was very, very glad because <laughs> I didn't have to say bye yet. But I have to say bye this year and I don't like that. And um, I'll come back to the second line in a minute because it seems like a good way to end the video. But yeah, that was a lot of fun uh, reacting to that. Like I said, I stand by the way this ends. <laughs> but you guys don't have to complain now like people did back in 2010, 2000, 2011 rather when I was uploading the book because uh, there are sequels and you can go read them. And there are links in my description down below where you can get all the books. The Kissing Booth 3 is available for pre-order. We don't have a release date yet, but the book will come out at the same time as the movie because it's based on the movie. It's a novelization of the movie. Hi, it's Future Beth here, just interrupting from the new house, uh, which is in a complete state of disarray. So I'm sorry about that. Just to say, actually, we do know now when Kissing Booth 3 is coming out and it is August 11th. So mark your calendars and pre-order the book at the link in the description down below. But yeah, thank you to the people who suggested this as a way to celebrate 10 years because it was a really fun thing to do and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, whether you've been following the Kissing Booth since 2011, um, 10 years ago, or whether you found it through the movies or whether you just stumbled across this video today, thank you because 
I would never have had any confidence in myself as a writer without it. I certainly wouldn't be published <laughs> if I had not decided to upload it on Wattpad. And, you know, within the last 10 years, I've currently published eight books. I've got two more on the way. I have got two Netflix adaptations with a third on the way. I've managed to buy a house with some of my savings from the money I've earned. I've been able to do some really amazing things like go to New York to do a panel for WatCon and go to the Biennale do Livro in Brazil, do a panel at YA LitCon the first year that that was on. I have done some really cool things that never would have happened otherwise. So to quote me on the last page before I get emotional and start crying, which is quite likely to happen, let's face it, just think all this from the kissing booth. I know I didn't read it all, but it was a good book. <laughs>